Hi folks! After my last Easy Press video, I received several messages asking if I can show how I made um, this ironing board. It's made with fabric, um, a cutting board that I had in the pantry, and some cotton batting and hot glue. You can make it also with staples. I also used heat and bond on a fabric to close up the back. This one, I went out looking for a smaller one, and the only one that I could find unfortunately had round corners, which I'm not crazy about. It's not as nice finish on the back, but it's functional. It turned out great. So if you'd like to see how I make these, keep watching. So I'll start by showing you what I'm using to cover my cutting board. I wanted a smaller one and the only one I found 9 by 12 had these cutouts for the handles but no matter because they're going to be well covered with batting and fabric I'll just make sure they're on the bottom so they're not in the way when I want to press something. This is my board is 9 by 12 this is an 8 by 11 piece of fabric that I'm going to use on the back to finish it to close it and hide the construction. I've added heat and bond to it so that I can just press it right across the entire back. I've cut this piece of fabric for the outside for my 9 by 12 board. I've cut it 14 by 18 so I have a good fold over to the back. And I've cut two pieces of cotton batting. I've cut them 13 by 17, so they're a little shorter than the fabric when I fold them over. I've used two pieces. I saw that someone mentioned they just covered a board with fabric and they ironed right on that. But if you take your even your cold iron and try rubbing it on a piece of fabric on a hot surf on a hard surface or on a surface that has batting, you're going to see a big difference in the way it feels to press. So I actually use two pieces of natural cotton batting. You can also use something like Insel Bright that's heat resistant. I imagine that would work well, but I have lots of cotton batting, so I use that. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing, oh, and you need hot glue. I think I mentioned that in the beginning. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my batting layers. I'm going to start with my corners. The corners on this are round. Um, if you have a cutting board or a piece of wood that has square corners, you might want to do this a little differently. But for round quarters, I find this works well. You want to be very careful with your glue gun. I've burnt myself many times with my glue guns and it's not funny. that get all my corners folded up okay now we're going to work on putting the sides up like this don't worry about the folds because everything is going to be covered in fabric so just do it the way you find easiest and neatest. I think I'll do mine like that, kind of like sandwiching them. It's a little harder on a round corner.
So there we go. Once you have all your batting attached and it doesn't have to be pretty, it's all going to be covered. You can see that you have a nice finish with the batting. And I also kind of like this bulk around it because it keeps the board lifted off the table, which I do like. So now we're going to take our large piece of fabric, center up our board, try to center it up. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing. So you're going to want to play with the fabric and See how best you want to do your corners. Kind of like that. So I think I'm going to do the same thing by gluing my corners down first and then bringing up my fabric. I like the way that looks. So I think that's what I'll do. Oh, we need some more glue stick. So I'll just go ahead and start with these corners again making sure to get some glue on the board itself because the, the fabric passes over the batting. And again, you want to be careful not to burn your fingers. Make sure that fits well. prefer to take my time and try not to burn myself. There we go. And another corner. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing, pulling the sides up and try to get them to extend over the batting. You might even want to cut the fabric even a little larger. On a 9 by 12, I cut 14 by 18. You might even want to cut 15 by 19 if you have that extra fabric. So let's see. We'll get some here. I'm going to try and get the glue right along the edge of the batting. Like that. That's nice. I'm not a big fan of these round corners, but that's what I have to work with. At least you can get an idea of how I did this. I know some people do it with um, staples, the big staple gun, but I don't really like the idea of having the table and the staple scraping up against my table. So I prefer to use the hot glue. We need another glue stick. Don't forget that you cut that nice piece to go over the back and hide all this construction.
there we go and now we're going to cover this and hide all the construction in the back finish with our hot glue I'll just peel this away So we're going to just set this aside. I don't need it anymore. So we're just going to take our hot iron and press. And I've covered this entire piece for the back with heat and bond. So I'm going to adhere it to the entire back to hide the construction and hide the wood board. and just get it all covered up. I would much rather have had a wood board with a square corner, but unfortunately I only found one with a round corner. But it'll work fine. That should be well adhered. And there we go. We have a nice little ironing board this is the larger one that I made. I made in the exact same way, but you can see with square corners, it's a lot easier. And we have this one for smaller projects, and I think I'll make something even smaller. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how I did these. Thank you for watching.